Hello everyone, so I was lucky enough to receive a parcel from all the way across the pond earlier in the week and inside that parcel was my prize for winning a subs competition over at Bumpy Road Brewery, so I'll put a link to the channel up there, please go along and subscribe. Um, Jesse is the name of the chap who uh, makes the videos on that channel and he was very generous in offering his competition prize out to uh, all comers and I was lucky enough to win and I got Mastering Homebrew by Randy Mosher, so uh, really happy with that because I'm a big fan of Mr Mosher's writing. Um, I haven't managed to read much of this book so far but at a glance it looks really good, loads of detail in there. It's very um, focused on sort of technique and different methods for brewing, uh, loads of great diagrams and illustrations and technical information. Not a huge amount in the way of recipes but like I said I think this is more focused on technique and process uh, but I really like his writing so once again thanks for that Jesse much appreciated and uh, please go along and subscribe to Jesse's channel if you can anyway having got that book and uh, sort of just looking through my burgeoning collection I thought I'd do a quick video on some of the other brewing books that I've got that I enjoy uh, just to highlight some of those that I think are worth a read if any of you um, like to read up on brewing as well as uh, making the beer itself. So yeah, this is my brewing library. So I've been brewing for a few years now and I have managed to acquire quite a few books so I'm not going to go through literally all of them because um, yeah, there's too many and some of them are not necessarily as good as others so these are kind of the select few. I will start with a couple of um, Randy Mosher's other books that I think are brilliant. Now this one, Radical Brewing, is one of, well, may, maybe my favourite of all the brewing books that I've got um, mostly because it's just a really good read. Uh, he writes really well and his uh, kind of enthusiasm for the subject does come through in the way that he writes about beer. Um, and this particular book, Radical Brewing, is um, very sort of focused on recipe development and experimenting with recipes yourself. Um, kind of like the other book that I res just received from Jesse, it's not necessarily uh, massive in terms of the recipes that are in there. Uh, although there are quite a few recipes in here, it's it's more about kind of the styles of beer, how to brew them yourself, how to um, come up with recipes for them, and just loads of interesting ideas. And um, as with the other books, it seems like there's quite a few slightly off the wall recipes and ideas in there as well. So um, yeah, as with a lot of brewing books, it goes through recipe ingredients, um, putting a beer recipe together, tasting, uh, more on tasting from this author in a minute, um, yeah, standard kind of brew styles through to fruit beers, um, other unusual ingredients, even talks about malting your own barley, historical recipes, um, all the way back to things like Gruet and, and so on, uh, honey, beers, mead as well. Yeah, so just really comprehensive um, in terms of kind of recipe formulation and ideas and uh, a great read, so thoroughly recommended from me. The other book from Randy that I've got and I've been reading recently is this. Now this isn't uh, really a brewing book per se because it's all about tasting beer, but I actually found reading this there was so much information in there that I thought is useful for people who are brewing beer because it's all about sensory evaluation of beer and obviously tasting your beer and evaluating it and trying to figure out what you want to do to improve it is uh, really important and um, again it's just written really well nice and easy to read it, it looks like it might be you know a bit of a sort of boring textbook but uh, I've really enjoyed it so far and um, it covers a lot of ground so there's a uh, he does seem to enjoy delving into kind of the historical background of a lot of stuff in his books, uh, which is the same here. Um, but it's definitely, you know, obviously the main focus of it is how to taste and uh, evaluate beer properly. So it's kind of, uh, I guess, almost like a manual for people who want to 
get into proper beer tasting or judging um, and so on. Uh, and in fact there is a section just on that, so tasting, judging and evaluation. Uh, it does go into specific beer styles and what is to be expected of those. Uh, and there's also a really good section in there on pairing beer with foods, which is quite interesting too. So again, I think that's, um, although it's not necessarily a brewing book as such, it's well worth a read for um, anyone who's interested in beer and tasting beer and so on. Uh, right, so this one. You didn't think I was going to do this little video without mentioning uh, what many people know as the Bible. So Homebrew Beer by Greg Hughes. Um, I managed to get this for a couple of quid when it was on offer on Amazon and probably the best value uh, book that I've picked up on brewing uh, because I got it at that price but it's a great it's a great buy anyway. Um, this one does have some basic information on the brewing process and uh, ingredients and so on so it's got the kind of typical format of a brewing book where you've got the introductory sections on ingredients and equipment and what you need how to brew using different methods um, but what this book is really all about is the recipes so from page uh, 72 through to or oh, sorry page 80 through to the end of the book so 206 you've basically got about 126 pages of recipes there or even maybe a bit more so uh, lagers ales IPAs pale ales Bitters, milds, brown ales, porters, stouts, it's all there. And um, the reason I think this book is so popular is because it's basically got a starting point for the vast majority of beer styles that you'd want. The recipes are nicely laid out, easy to follow, um, all the vital information clearly presented. And uh, on the whole, the ones that I've tried have made really good beers as well and I think a lot of people would would agree as well that most of the recipes out here are pretty sound um, as far as I'm aware they're all kind of tried and tested recipes I think one of the first videos that I actually did on my channel was based on a recipe out of here um, maybe the tin miners ale or something like that but I've done a fair few the summer ale is a little bit of a classic for a real simple English ale that you can make um, with minimum fuss and get a great result. I've brewed a version of that. The raspberry wheat beer I've done out of here. Um, versions of the American IPA. Like I said, the recipes are all fairly straightforward, so it's a really good basis for experimenting and testing out recipes, and you know that the base recipe that you're given here is gonna produce something decent, so uh, yeah substituting hops or a bit of grain out here and there you usually end up with a good result whatever you do so yeah a bit of a classic certainly amongst uh, most people who would be watching this channel I imagine um, and a great resource for recipes now this one I've only just recently got and that was uh, pretty much on the recommendation of um, Dean over at Tube Dino's so Go and check out his channel and the review that he did of this book. I won't go into too much more detail, but this is a big book of clone recipes and they're from Brew Your Own Magazine. Um, 300 recipes, in fact, so a huge number to plough through in here. Um, I've used a couple of the recipes before that I found either from the website or for, through one of their other books. Uh, and again, they're all pretty good. Um, usually tried and tested. This covers a huge range as well, so pale ales, India pale ales, all sorts of IPAs through brown lagers, porters, brown ales, sorry, and lagers, porters, stouts, imperial, barley wines, Belgian styles, British beers, European ales and lagers, um, through to fruit and sour beers. Loads of stuff. Now, for us uh, European and UK brewers, the only downside I guess with this book is a lot of it's based on US recipes so you may not have actually tried a lot of the beers in here I know I certainly haven't but I have done a few of the recipes and this was one thing that uh, Dean pointed out in his review was that um, you know if they're based on commercial beers which are successful and sell reasonably well then 
you can probably safely assume that they're going to turn out at least a half decent beer if you attempt them. So I have done uh, a couple of recipes out of here already. Like I said, the Pivo Pills, which I've got a video on, I'll put a link up to that, is an excellent, excellent lager. I would thoroughly recommend that. I've got another Pilsner out of this book, which is just cold crashing behind me in the fridge at the moment. And I am uh, actually planning on brewing a wit beer out of here as well at the weekend. So making good use of that one and a real nice supplement to the other books like homebrew beer that I've already got. Right, uh, what else have we got here? So this one I thought was a really good read as well. Lager by Dave Carpenter. This wasn't uh, released that long ago, I think, so I saw that this was coming out and just fancied um, buying this. 20 lager recipes, so it's not a huge amount in the way of um, recipes, but it is a really interesting read if you are interested on the background and history of lager and all the different styles of lager that are around. Um, and for people who maybe sort of think about lager in terms of just the watery piss that you can buy in most pubs uh, i think this is a really good book to kind of introduce you to what the real um you know range of different lager styles and beers there are out there that you can make um, it goes into loads of detail about the sort of history of the different lager producing regions and where um, different styles have come from how the beers are actually brewed uh, tasting and enjoying beer lager and um yeah I, I kind of read through this in a couple of days i think and just enjoyed it thoroughly um there's not many recipes in there but there are some really good looking recipes there some classic kind of lagers and then some more um i guess uh modern kind of craft beer recipes uh and some quite uh unusual ones as well so there's a spruce pilsner in there for example um, but yeah, quite a few recipes in there that eventually I will get round to trying out, hopefully. This one is by Danny Con and Drew Beecham. So a couple of uh, home brewing kind of heavyweights there from America. Um, they do the Experimental Brewing Podcast, if any of you are familiar with that. And I think... Uh, they're both kind of regulars on a lot of the American forums and they occasionally pop up on um, some of the brewing uh, groups as well on YouTube and stuff like that. Uh, sorry, uh, BrewTube I meant to say. And some of the UK forums even as well. So uh, this book is essentially, it's called Homebrew All Stars and essentially it's basically loads of um, well-renowned brewers from America, home brewers and um, other people who are involved in the beer scene over there in one way or another basically giving their recipes out uh, but also sort of their advice and tips on how to brew different styles and um, and so on and I really like the way that that's laid out because you for each kind of section you have a little bit about the brewer what their kind of philosophy is um, and how they go about brewing a particular type of beer or what they think is the um, most important sort of methods and techniques to use for successful brewing of each uh, recipe that they've put in. Um, some really good looking recipes in there. It's divided up by the different sort of styles of brewer um, that they kind of denote. So you've got old school masters, so people who like to stick to the traditional methods and processes, um, scientists or process nerds, so people who like to kind of geek out over the technicalities or study the method and process. Um, so you've got people like uh, Marshall Shop from Brewlosophy in here and uh, Martin Brungard, Chris Colby, uh, author of one of the other books that we're going to look at in a second, um, John Palmer and several others who I'm not that familiar with but I know a lot of the other names in there. Martin Brungard who does the uh, Brew and Water spreadsheet. You've got people who are well known for wild beers, uh, so wild yeast and sour beers, I guess, and then recipe and ingredient innovators, um, such as Drew Beecham himself, for producing unusual recipes like clam chowder saison, uh, 
Don't know if I'll ever be brewing that myself, but still an interesting recipe to look at. Um, yeah, and just a really uh, well thought out and laid out book there. So that's a good one too. Right, we're dragging on a little bit now, but last one, uh, just mentioned his name in the other book. So Homebrew Recipe Bible. This one can get a bit confusing when people start talking about the Bible uh, and you search for that and find this one. This is not the book that most people refer to as the Bible, even though it is the Bible. Uh, yeah, so that's why it's <laughs> confusing. But um, it is an excellent book in of itself. It is, uh, as you would expect, packed full of recipes. Loads of inspiration in there. Uh, it starts off with some extract recipes, so there's quite a few nice extract recipes in there. Um, not that I would ever brew extracts, but if that's your thing, there's some good ideas in there for that. And then it's broken up into different styles. Um, dark ales, ambers, pale ales, lagers, dark and amber lagers, pale lagers, uh, speciality yeast or bacteria, beers, and beers made with special ingredients. Now, um, this is where you find some of the really interesting stuff in this book. Things like the um, sweet potato bitter, for example, uh, peanut butter porter, maple syrup amber ale, and bacon smoked porter. So some really unusual stuff there, but the, uh, the other recipes are all kind of very classic, um, fairly well, I would say fairly bulletproof in appearance from the simplicity uh, of them and their kind of classic ingredients. And uh, there's some great starting points in here. The other thing that is great about this book, kind of like the um, Homebrew All Stars, is that for every recipe, there's kind of tips on how to um, brew it well. So, for example, uh, if we just have a look here. So each recipe will kind of have some recipe notes at the top with tips or a little bit of extra information about certain things. So for example here with this bitter recipe it's talking about um, adding a little bit of biscuit malt or amber malt um, for a little bit of extra flavour. Uh, perhaps in place of crystal malt just to add a little bit of depth and that's something that um, I would definitely agree with because it's one thing that I like to do a lot with English ales and bitters is to sub in a little bit of biscuit or amber amber malt. So yeah, another good one. Homebrew Recipe Bible by Chris Colby. That's about it. So like I said, I've got a whole load of other books, but I don't want to spend um, all evening just going through all of them for you. But those are kind of my, my favourites out of the collection and uh, uh, all ones that I would recommend uh, you buying if you're into reading about homebrew. So I uh, hope that some of you enjoyed that or maybe saw a few books you might be interested in or be putting on your uh, Christmas or birthday list or whatever. So cheers everyone and uh, see you soon. I'm the dude. So that's what you call me, you know? Uh, that or uh, his dudeness or uh, duder or, uh, you know, El Duderino.